Fox News confirming that CIA Director William Burns held a secret face-to-face -face meeting with the Taliban's de facto leader in Kabul yesterday. The meeting is the highest level meeting between the Taliban and the Biden administration since Taliban fighters seized Kabul. This as the Pentagon is denying reports that the U.S. paid the Taliban to give Americans safe passage to the airport in that city. Our next guest has called for President Biden's national security team to resign. Joining us now, Kentucky Congressman, House Financial Services Committee member and House Foreign Affairs Committee member, Andy Barr. Uh, Andy, what say you about the CIA meeting? Well, Dagan, this is the picture of weakness, incompetence, and failure in foreign policy. It was just seven months ago that we were dictating the terms of our drawdown in Afghanistan. And now it appears because of the chaos and the collapse of Afghanistan, it's the Taliban that is setting the terms of our evacuations. And uh, we're going to be meeting today with uh, the president's uh, foreign policy and national security team uh, uh, in a, on a bipartisan basis. Uh, and I want to know a lot of answers to a lot of questions. How did we get to this point? Whose idea was it to abandon the Bagram Air Base before we extracted all of our people, our allies, and our equipment, and our uh, weapons, and, and aircraft? And uh, why was it that the administration failed to heed the intelligence assessments all the way back uh, to April? Uh, we got them, members of Congress on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. We received uh, the intelligence assessments that uh, this retreat strategy was failing. Why did the administration not respond? And finally, in terms of getting our people out, uh, you're getting mixed signals. You hear yesterday from the White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki say that it's irresponsible to say that Americans are stranded, and yet the Secretary of Defense says that he doesn't have the capability to push into Kabul, let alone go outside of uh, Kabul. And the State Department itself is warning Americans to not go to the Hamid Karzai International Airport. So which is it? Do they have the capability yeah. to bring our Americans to the airport and extract them, or uh, do they just not have the will to do so? Yeah, Congressman, I think you hit on all of that. It's Maria Bartiromo here. We are just scratching our heads trying to understand who put these decisions in place and how the heck this was uh, executed. I mean, he closes Bagram Air Force Base on July 5th. Then on July 8th comes out and says this. Let's roll Joe Biden's press conference from July 8th. Watch it. Is a Taliban takeover of Afghanistan now inevitable? No, it is not. Because you have the Afghan troops have 300,000 well-equipped, as well-equipped as any army in the world, and an Air Force, against something like 75,000 Taliban. It is not inevitable. Uh, well, and that is exactly what we saw take place, Congressman. Exactly. This was totally avoidable. And my question to the national security team is, did they not brief the commander in chief before July 8th? Because what we see now is that on April 9th and the president, the president should be getting these briefings from the office of his director of national intelligence April 9th, well before July 8th. I'm going to read it to you. Quote, we assess that prospects for a peace deal will remain low during the next year, the Taliban is likely to make gains on the battlefield, and the Afghan government will struggle to hold the Taliban at bay if the coalition withdraws support. I don't know who is advising this president that everything was rosy and everything was going to be fine. Uh, this was a, a calamity in the making. We saw it. Um, the State Department itself. Uh, briefed members of the House Foreign Affairs Committee that their strategy was failing. That was contemporaneous with the time that the president was making these totally uh, wrong-headed assessments. And then the final, the final yeah. point is 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 that um, is that the, the 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 Secretary of State, Secretary Blinken, received a dissent cable in mid-July where career diplomats in Kabul in the embassy were, were right. warning him of the collapse of uh, Kabul, and they made no adjustments to the strategy. Well, I, I was told I was told that this president uh, does not trust his generals. That's what I was told. 
uh, that he doesn't trust the generals and he wanted to shut Bagram Air Force Base because he didn't want to have them have any opportunity to take in more weapons, to take in more artillery to go against and fight the Taliban. He wanted it shut down. And that's it. Period. End of story. Now, it's amazing to me that you've got the Taliban deciding who gets out of Afghanistan and into America, and you've got the criminal cartels deciding in Mexico who gets into America. I mean, where is U.S. leadership? It's just extraordinary, Congressman. Are we going to be talking about the 25th Amendment in terms of this president? A lot of people now raising their you know, awareness of his own cognitive abilities. Uh, the alternative would be Kamala Harris in the seat. Do these mistakes blow up their economic agenda? I know a group of moderate Democrats are clashing with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi now. She wants that reconciliation bill pushed through, even in the face of all of this in Afghanistan and at the border. What's your take on that? Well, my take is that Democrats in the Congress recognize the foreign policy failures of this administration and that this president is weak. And, and I think that is uh, uh, interfering with uh, the confidence of, frankly, many of my Democrat colleagues and the leadership from the White House. And so what you saw last night is we were hanging around waiting to vote and the Democrat majority couldn't get their act together. Uh, they have these dissenters, these moderates who, to their credit, are saying, look, this is this is not what we want. We don't want to vote for socialism. We want to vote for this bipartisan infrastructure bill. But look, this, this bipartisan infrastructure bill that came over from the Senate because it's being held hostage by Nancy Pelosi and the progressives and the far left in, in the Democrat caucus, it is just a Trojan horse for uh, socialism. And so uh, what I would say is uh, I don't think any Republican or any moderate should cast any vote in favor of any of this until we know for sure that the $3.5 trillion socialism budget resolution is completely dead and off the table. Uh, they need to be totally delinked. Uh, now, what we are being told this morning is that some of these moderates might be backing down a little bit, and they've extracted a commitment from the speaker to uh, have a vote certain on the infrastructure bill uh, before a date certain. But at the bottom line is, I don't think any member of Congress who calls themselves a fiscal conservative should ever vote for anything, whether it's infrastructure or not, until we know for sure this socialism bill is totally dead. Yeah. Well, how about getting something on the border, an acknowledgment that they're going to put money toward the Homeland Security? The budget has no new money to Homeland Security and, 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 and a decrease in money toward, toward defense, uh, which is exactly. incredible with our adversaries rising. It's, it's absolutely extraordinary. Congressman, I know you have your hands full. We're going to check back with you and see how it develops. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Maria.